This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. We've been hearing rumors that Ari has been developing a new Super 35 4K camera for years. Well, it seems it's finally time. A brochure for the new Alexa 35 has leaked that outlines all the features of this new camera. If you follow the channel, you know that I don't really react to new stories, but rather focus on discussing a more general overview of filmmaking topics. However, since I think this new Alexa 35 has the potential to take over the high-end cinema camera industry in a similar way that the original Mini did all those years ago, I'm going to run through and react to some of the key features of this new camera. <coughs> Before I start, I should probably mention that Ari's approach to camera development and releasing new cameras is a bit different from some other brands. Brands like RED, for example, are known for putting out cameras as soon as they can and then sorting out any bugs or issues that arise in early testing. Ari is far more conservative and precise about their releases. They don't release new gear very often. The Alexa 35 represents Ari's first new sensor that they have developed in 12 years. So when they do choose to unveil a new piece of gear to the public, you can rest assured it's been thoroughly tested and carries a reputation that will live up to all the specs that they mention. Ari's cameras are all developed to fulfill a specific section of the cinema market that relates to its sensor size, specs or physical size of the camera. For example, the Alexa Mini was developed as a Super 35 camera which was small enough to be used on a gimbal. Or the Alexa 65 was developed to provide a 65mm digital sensor size. The Alexa 35 was developed to be an update of the Alexa Mini with a Super 35 sensor, a small form factor and the crucial update of recording higher resolutions. Apart from its effect on the images, a big reason this increase in resolution was made was to meet the 4K requirements needed to film Netflix originals. Previously, this was only possible with their cameras that had larger sensors like the Mini LF and was unavailable in the Super 35 format. As I've said in a previous video, Super 35 sensors have a different look and field of view than large format cameras. Since it's been the standard format throughout cinema history, there's also the largest range of cinema lenses to choose from. So let's run through some key specs. Like with their other new cameras, the Alexa 35 can record in ProRes or ARRI RAW. It tops out at 4.6K in open gate and can record up to 75 frames per second onto the larger 2TB codex drives which goes down to 35 frames on the 1TB drive. In regular 4K 16x9 mode, this frame rate is pushed up to 120 in ARRI RAW. This is a nice upgrade from the Mini LF and will cover most slow motion needs on set before needing to change to a dedicated slow motion camera like a Phantom. An impressive feature of this new sensor is that ARRI has found an extra 1.5 stops of dynamic range in the highlights and another stop in the shadows. This brings the total exposure latitude of the camera to 17 stops. They also claim that the highlights have a naturalistic film-like roll-off to them. To me, how a cinema camera handles the highlights is one of the most important factors in creating a pleasing film stock-like look. It's something that the previous Alev 3 sensor did well, which I'm sure will continue or be improved upon by this new iteration. As many DPs tend to push a more naturalistic lighting style these days, I think the increased dynamic range that they claim will also help control the light in more radical exteriors and make sure there's detail in the highlights from hot windows in interiors. More manufacturers these days, such as Sony, have been moving to a dual ISO model that is a standard ISO for regular use and a boosted native ISO for low light situations. It seems ARRI hasn't gone quite this far but has made a move in the direction of improving the low light performance of the camera with what they are calling an enhanced sensitivity mode. This can be activated when the EI is set between 2560 and 6400. They claim this creates a low noise image in low light and is targeted at filmmakers who want to use available light during night shoots. 
When it comes to color, Ari has developed a new workflow called Reveal Color Signs, which they claim is a simpler workflow for Ari Raw post-production and leads to higher quality images with accurate lifelike color. They also claim that the Alexa 35 footage will be able to cut with their existing line of Alexa cameras, while I assume the color will therefore be fairly similar to the existing Ari look, this is going to be something that will need to be seen once footage starts getting released. Before I get into what is probably my favorite proposed feature of the Alexa 35, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that can be used to easily create a beautiful, functional website which is why I use Squarespace to make the website for this channel by choosing from their range of professional portfolio designs. Every cinematographer needs to have a website to show to their potential clients or collaborators and which offers a point of contact. You can display your film work in one of Squarespace's video libraries and can even create a private members area to gain control over who can access your content, a great new revenue stream for content creators, or digital businesses. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash indepthcine to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. So I mentioned a new feature of the Alexa 35 that I'm excited about, and that is what they are calling ARRI textures. When digital cameras were originally introduced, the common way of working with them was to record as flat a log image as possible, which would then have more room to be manipulated in post-production by doing things like creating a look, adding artificial film grain, adjusting saturation, these kinds of things. I think as cinematographers have gotten more used to the digital workflow, there's been a bit of a push to go back to the old ways where decisions that cinematographers made on set determine the look of the negative. Some do this now by creating a custom LUT before production, which is then added to the transcoded files which I edited with, so that a look for the footage is established early on, rather than found later when it's handed over to the colorist at the end of the job. With that said, ARRI Textures is a sort of setting plugin that is made in camera that defines the amount and character of the grain in the image, as well as the contrast of details or sharpness. So cinematographers now have the ability to change the way the camera records an image, much like they would back in the day by selecting different film stocks. I think this is a great idea as a tool as it puts control back into the hands of cinematographers and allows them to make these decisions on set rather than having to fight for their look in the grade. With all of these new features and high resolution comes a need for more power in order to get all of this done. With that in mind, the Alexa 35 will be a completely 24 volt powered camera. Rather than prior cameras that could run off 12 volt batteries like Velox, as well as 24 volt power. This will be done with a new system of B mount batteries. I haven't personally worked with these batteries yet, but one plus I foresee, apart from them providing a higher consistent level of power, is that they can be used by camera operators who operate with their hand on the back of the battery. This has become a popular way to operate, particularly with a rig like an Easy Rig. I always found older gold mount or V mount batteries had a tendency to lose power and shut down the camera from time to time as the contacts shifted when operated. This should no longer be a problem with the B mount. In terms of its form factor, I think this new Alexa is a great size, around the same size as the Mini LF, a little larger than the original Mini but small enough to be used for handheld and gimbal work. The pictures show the addition of a little menu on the operator side of the camera with quick access to basic settings like frames per second, shutter, EI, ND and white balance. It kind of reminds me of old ARRI film cameras that came with a little setting screen display on the operator side. The main reason I think this will be useful is for when the camera needs to be stripped down for Steadicam, Gimbal or Drone and loses its viewfinder, which has the main menu access. On the old cameras, if you needed to change settings, you'd have to awkwardly plug in the eyepiece and wait for it to power up before you could do so, or use it through the ARRI app on a phone, which can be buggy. This new menu should save time in those scenarios. 
Other than that, they've added some extra user buttons, which reminds me of the mirror a bit, and perhaps it's intended for quicker use in documentary situations. The new camera comes with a bunch of redesigned components with the intention of making it a small but versatile camera that can be built into light or studio setups. Finally, one criticism I have is that like the Mini LF, the Alexa 35 only has three different stops of internal ND, a 0.6, 1.2 and 1.8. I'm surprised they didn't try to add more stops to compete with Sony's Venice that has eight different stops of internal ND filters, from 0.3 to 2.4. I know cinematographers who like shooting on the Venice almost entirely for the ease and speed that having all the internal NDs you could need provides. So those are my reactions to this new camera from Ari. On the surface, there don't seem to be many flaws with it, although I'm sure some criticisms will develop with hands on time. We'll see how things unfold, but we may be looking at the next workhorse of cinema that'll dominate the high-end market for years to come. Otherwise, until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.